The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. Reading verses 10 through 11. And when you have it, please say amen. And if you do not, simply avert your eyes to the screens. From the New Revised Standard Translation, here's what it says. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you have your pens, underline this as a thesis verse for the message this morning. In the 10th verse, when he entered Jerusalem, underline these words, the whole city was in turmoil. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Providence and friends, with the help of your prayers and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we want to preach to you from the subject of Jesus is a big deal. Jesus is a big deal. Providence, you should know that today is Palm Sunday. It is the day that marks the first day of the final week of Jesus' earthly ministry. At the end of this week on Good Friday, our Savior will be arrested and crucified. Three days later on Easter Sunday morning, he will get up and be resurrected. But today, Palm Sunday, scripture tells us that Jesus is working his way back to Jerusalem. What a significant sacrifice Jesus made going back to Jerusalem. You know that Jerusalem is where they waited and plotted to kill him. Jerusalem is where they sought to silence his gospel and put an end to his ministry. Jerusalem is where they wanted it to return to business as usual. They desired the status quo of high religiosity, but low faith. Why in the world, Jesus, would you go back to Jerusalem? Why would you put yourself and your disciples in that danger? Why seek the lost? living to love those who don't love you back. Why, on this Palm Sunday, Jesus, would you go back to Jerusalem? Jesus knows, my friends, that this is how we feel on this Palm Sunday, the beginning of his last week on earth. We are thankful for him giving up his life. We are thankful for his sacrifice. We are thankful that eternal salvation is ours, but many of us don't understand why. We don't understand why until you consider that the answer to our why question is actually the means by which the question exists in the first place. The answer is sacrifice. Jesus went back to Jerusalem because of sacrifice. He gave his enemies his life because of sacrifice. He allowed them to temporarily think that they had defeated him, that they had won because of sacrifice. Jesus was willing to sacrifice for me. Jesus was willing to sacrifice for you. Friends, we spent all month learning about and studying sacrifice in the scriptures. We've preached on sacrifice from your lack, sacrifice from your lips, sacrifice from your life, and today we will conclude our study on sacrifice with sacrifice from your love. Jesus would argue that on this Palm Sunday, he sacrificed his life because he loves you. Consider, if you will, the significant sacrifices of the New Testament that Jesus made for me and for you. You know that Jesus gave up the mercy seat, the holy seat in heaven, that he might come down to earth to save your life. Jesus took on worldly ridicule and shame of being in the lower class without wealth. He stood against a regime of pharisaical power when no one would stand with him 
and ultimately all would abandon him. He turned away from the worldly pleasures of revenge, of recompensing evil for evil, of saying whatever he wanted to say, of doing whatever he wanted to do. Jesus sacrificed and allowed himself to be betrayed by one who was among him. He sacrificed by allowing himself to be arrested by people who were beneath him. He sacrificed by allowing himself to be beaten by people who spat and cursed him. And there, hanging on a tree in physical anguish and agony, knowing that he was innocent, Jesus gave up his life because it is what God required of him that you and I might be saved. Love made Jesus sacrifice some unimaginable things. And to bring it all to a close, Palm Sunday marks the day when the source and the passion of Jesus' sacrifice is made complete. Here in the Gospel of Matthew, you know the story. The Bible says the disciples brought Jesus into Jerusalem on a donkey. They, they laid their cloaks on the donkey in favor of Jesus' comfort. They hoisted him up on the animal and prepared to re-enter the city of his pending demise. Verse 8 tells us that no sooner than Jesus was up on the donkey, no, no sooner than had they crossed the Jerusalem city limits, no sooner than had he returned to the place where they desired to kill my Savior, no sooner than he got there, then a very large crowd appeared. Seemingly, by the way you read the text here in Matthew, the crowd materialized out of nowhere. It is as if the word spread through the city like wildfire. People came from near and far. They came from East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem, from North Jerusalem and South Jerusalem. The people came from all over just to see Jesus. The Bible says they, they cut branches from the tree, palm trees we believe in, and they spread the palms on the floor to make the rough places smooth for their honored hero. Before Jesus, they stood. They, they walked ahead of Jesus, and, and waving their palm branches, they, they said out loud, Hosanna! to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And verse 10, our selected verse of the morning, tells us that while all this was going on, the city was in turmoil. This morning, brothers and sisters, as we think about sacrificing for others from our love, I want to know why was the city in turmoil? Why, why was there such chaos? around this event of Jesus returning to the city? Why was some people shouting Hosanna, verse 9, and other people shouting, who is this, verse 10? The Passover festival was upon them. Family and friends from all over town were in Jerusalem. They were there to remember and to commemorate and to honor what the Spirit of God had done in delivering their ancestors from Egyptian bondage. You, you, you understand what was going on for the Passover week. The, the parties were in full swing. The bands were happily playing. The young men and women were dancing. How is it the city got to be in turmoil over Jesus? Why is it that when this one man came back to Jerusalem, that the city was in turmoil? Why was Jesus such a big deal to them? And in my study of the text this month, I, I realized I'm asking the wrong question. The question is not, why was Jesus such a big deal to them? The question is, is Jesus a big deal to you? On this Palm Sunday, as Jesus crosses the city limits of your life, riding into the center of your heart, does Jesus command the same attention from you now that he commanded from them back then? Will you stop on this day to recognize and honor the one who comes in the name of the Lord? Will you sacrifice your respective Passover preparations? Will you sacrifice your own Easter preparations to come out and honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
In our text, you should know that people had meals in their house they were preparing. They, they had Levitical laws to obey. They, they had jobs to work. They, they had families coming in town to consider. Yet, in spite of all that was going on in their lives, at the presence and moment that Jesus entered the city, Everybody stopped what they were doing, and the city was thrown into turmoil. It's as if the people knew. It's as if they knew that if it hadn't been for Jesus, there would never have been a Passover. If, if it hadn't been for Jesus, there would be no Levitical laws to follow. If, if it hadn't been for Jesus, we wouldn't have jobs to work. If it hadn't been for Jesus, we wouldn't have families to consider. It, it's as if the people knew. Sure, he stood up against injustice by denouncing the scribes. Sure, he rallied against the healthcare system by healing on his own. Sure, he lobbied for prison reform by repeatedly walking away from arrest. Sure, he opened the largest community food bank with 12 baskets left over from feeding 5,000. Sure, he showed us how we ought to love our neighbor, care for the sick, and be there for the elderly. But in spite of all that, it is as if the people knew that the blessings that Jesus had done yesterday were nothing in comparison to who he is in the present day. So it doesn't matter how he blessed us yesterday. It doesn't matter what he did yesterday. Jesus is here today. So I've got to stop everything. I've got to drop everything. I've got to sacrifice anything. I've got to get outside. I've got to see this Jesus. My brothers and sisters, this is the essence of what Palm Sunday should mean to you and I. This is what it reminds us of on this day. This is the day that you ought to commemorate and honor the triumphal entry of Jesus into your life. This is the day that you ought to pause to honor and show some respect for the fact that the Lord came into your life. It cannot on this day just be business as usual. You cannot leave here and just return to the work of your life. You cannot forget how you came to know Jesus and how Jesus came to know you. But yet on Palm Sunday, somebody in here has to stop and declare, Hosanna. I know that you are busy, but you've got to stop and declare. I know you you got a lot on your mind, but you've got to stop and declare. I know you're stressed out. I know your job wants too much. Your employer is crazy. Your health isn't perfect. Your children's schedules got you running all over the town. Traffic has you running all the way down. And I know you don't feel like being bothered. But if the same people who could crucify Jesus had enough sense to come out and honor the Savior, how much more should we as people who love the Lord be able to stop the busyness of our lives, stop the busyness of our speech. Stop the busyness of our words and say, Lord, I recognize you. My friends, this is the essence of Palm Sunday. The King of glory is coming in. The passion of the Christ is before you. The love of his sacrifice is evident and you don't want to miss it because you don't recognize that it's Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday in the Christian liturgical calendar when you ought to remember that Jesus is a big deal. Palm Sunday is your opportunity to praise God for the fast that you've been on, to, to extol God for the Bible reading that you've done, to worship God for the prayers that you've been praying, to thank God for the healing that you've received, to remind God that I will be the first to offer up my cloak. I will be the first to rip down a palm branch. I will be the first to lead you into Jerusalem, but I will not crucify you afterwards because you are a big deal to me. The Bible says there they were. They were out in the streets. They were bringing the party to Jesus. They were honoring him for who he is. Do you know who must have been in the streets that day? Do you realize that for as important as Jesus was, the only people that were probably out there were people who had experienced his holiness. So they came out to see him. That there were people who had seen him heal the hurting. They saw him feed the hungry. They watched him give hope to the helpless, so they came out to see him. 
Only those people who knew for themselves that his power was real and that his truth was everlasting, those are the people who came out into the streets that day. These are the people we expect would follow Jesus from town to town and house to house. These are the people who didn't care that they had food to prepare. They didn't care they had families coming in town. They didn't care what other people might say about them. These are the ones who pressed in on Jesus so they could touch the hem of his garment. These are the ones who wanted to hear his holy teachings. These are the ones who wanted to see his divine miracles. These are the ones we expected to be in the streets that day. But the Bible says they were not the only ones who were out there. The Bible says that on this Palm Sunday, these were not the only people who were in the streets to see Jesus. The Bible says in verse 10 that the city was in turmoil for those who knew Jesus. The city was all excited for those who got excited about Jesus. But the city was also in turmoil for people who asked, who is this? Who are we getting all excited about? Who is it that we stopped cooking our meals for and stopped preparing the guest bedrooms for? Who, who is this? And you and I can imagine that if you and I lived in that day, we would say, what? Who, who is this? Have you been living under a rock for the past three years? Have you not seen? Have you not heard? Do you not know who this Jesus is? The question of the text, who is this, is the most powerfully instructive question in this chapter. It forces us to ask the question, not only should Jesus be a big deal to you, but Jesus should also be a big deal to people who know you. D does it not seem strange to you that in the same town of Jerusalem, there are people in Jerusalem who know the love and power and grace of Jesus, that they would come out and say, Hosanna. Yet in that same city, there are other people who live in the houses with those people. There are other people who work right next to those people. There are other people who live right next to those people who would say, who is this? The implication of the text is that, yes, there were people who knew about Jesus, but the people who knew about Jesus kept Jesus to themselves. Brothers and sisters, I want to honor for you this morning that Palm Sunday is not only a reminder that Jesus should be a big deal to you. Palm Sunday is a reminder that through the witness and testimony of your life, Jesus should be a big deal in the lives of people who know you. Something's wrong. Something's wrong in Jerusalem if Jesus fed the 5,000 but you didn't come home and tell anybody. Something's wrong in Cana if Jesus can turn water into wine and save the hospitality of a host at a wedding but you didn't come home from the wedding and share the story. Something's wrong in Bethsaida if Jesus can give sight to the blind but you didn't see fit to share it with anybody. Something's wrong. In Nazareth, if you heard the teaching in the temple, but you didn't share that teaching with anybody, something's wrong. In Galilee, if Jesus made you fishes of men, but you went home and put your fishing pole up, something's wrong. I see you're not getting the point. Let me bring it home. Something's wrong in Atlanta if Jesus healed your body, yet you haven't shared your testimony. Something's wrong on Cascade if Jesus turned your marriage around, but you ain't helping nobody else's marriage. Something's wrong. On Benjamin E. Mays, if you'll come here and feed strangers, but you won't feed people in your own family, something's wrong. In Beecher, if Jesus brought you out of addiction, yet you judging other addicts, something's wrong. If you know Jesus and people know you and they don't know Jesus, something's wrong. If people around you are saying, who is this God that you are going to serve, something's wrong. If you got in your car and drove here and left somebody in the bed, something's wrong. If you can make it to church but your children ain't here, something's wrong. If Easter is a big deal in your life but it's not a big deal in the lives of people who know you, something's wrong. If Jesus is a big deal to you but it's not a big deal to people that know you, listen, I cannot shout Hosanna till we all shout Hosanna. I refuse to say praise the Lord till we all praise the Lord. If I want you to believe that Jesus can make a difference in your life, I've got to show you the Lord has made a difference for me. Jesus was marching in. Some people knew the Lord but some people didn't. Providence, I want to offer to you that there are people in your lives who still don't know the Lord. You've been in the, fa you've been in the family with these people for years. 
yet they still don't know the Lord. Your cubicle is right next to theirs. You work next to this joker for day after day, week after week, month after month, and they still don't know the Lord. Their house is right next to yours. You've been living next to them for years, and they still don't know the Lord. Something's wrong. If the people who know us don't know that Jesus is a big deal. One scholar said it like this. You become a hypocrite when you can't freely be at peace with others, but you can carry green palm leaves in church on Sunday. The translation of the quote is somebody in the church has got to put down your palms. You got to lay down your coat and let somebody else walk towards Jesus. You've got to lay down your palms and, and tread lightly to get other people to the Father. If Jesus is that big a deal to you, then something about the way you live ought to make Jesus a big deal to other people. This, I believe, is how Palm Sunday is supposed to be. Notice in the text that the text doesn't end with verse 10. It ends with verse 11. This is why the text concludes with verse 11. When, when they asked, who is this? Watch how they responded. They said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I'm not making this up. Look at the text. It says, this is the prophet Jesus. Question, how come you made it through all that you've been through in your life? Response, this is the prophet Jesus. Question, where did you learn to forgive everybody? Response, this is the prophet Jesus. Question, how come you love your neighbor when your neighbor doesn't love you back? Answer, this is the prophet Jesus. Question, why is it you read consistently? Why do you pray incessantly? Why do you fast intermittently? Response, this is the prophet Jesus. In verse 11, when the crowd responds, this is the prophet Jesus, in that moment, they shared the gospel. They, they did not point to themselves. They did not put it on their own intelligence. They didn't put it on their own hard work. They didn't give it to their own network. They didn't lift up their own sagaciousness. But they shifted the focus where the focus belongs. This is the prophet Jesus. Uh, my brothers and sisters, my de declaration for you is that this week, somebody is going to ask you the question of why you are so smart. Someone's going to ask you how you got to be so strong. Somebody's going to ask you how did you make it over? Why are you so amazing? Why is your family looking so nice? Uh, and when somebody gives you that opportunity, don't you tell them about yourself. Don't, don't you tell them about the decisions you made. Don't you tell them how cool you are. Don't you tell them how good you look. But tell them about the Lord. Tell them about the prophet Jesus. What an amazing job you have. Thank you. That is the prophet Jesus. What a beautiful family you have. Thank you. That is the prophet Jesus. What a cool church you go to. Thank you. That is the prophet Jesus. Now, 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 now notice in the text, that's not all that they said. See, you have to read slow because if you read too fast... You missed too much. They said this is the prophet Jesus, but they didn't stop there. They kept on talking. They said this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Translation, uh, you can't just talk about any Jesus. It matters which Jesus you talking about. Uh, brothers and sisters, most people don't know, but back, back in the days of Palm Sunday, Jesus was a very popular name. Jesus back then is kind of like Matthew today. It's kind of like Michael today. Everybody had the name Jesus. And when the people answered the question, who is this? They didn't want you to get it twisted as to which Jesus they were talking about. Friends, I want you to know the Bible is teaching you that when you have an opportunity to proclaim the name of Jesus this week, I, I need to make sure you are talking about the right Jesus. Uh, notice in the Bible that the crowd speaks with exceeding specificity of which Jesus they are referring to uh, because it matters which Jesus you serve. Friends, you should know I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of listening to my colleagues in and out of the faith. I listen to a lot of the podcasts, and I watch a lot of preachers on TV, and people love to use the name of Jesus. Every time I'm watching TV, they say, Jesus this, and, and Jesus that. And the closer I listen to people with my spiritual ears, I realize you're not talking about the Jesus that saved me. 
You see, if we're going to be the church, then during Holy Week, you have to talk about the name of a particular, specific Jesus. When somebody asks you about your life and to tell the testimony of your life, you have to talk about Jesus. You know the one who puts others higher than himself. Jesus, the one who said, blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus, the one who said, give to those who ask of you. Jesus, the one who said, turn the other cheek. Jesus, the one who said, forgive other people. Uh, Jesus, the one who said, love your neighbor. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, this week, do not call my Savior's name if you're not talking about the Jesus that saved me. Uh, because testifying in the name of Jesus, any other Jesus just won't do. Uh, listen, this week when I hear you talk, uh, I do not want to hear about many Jesus, pseudo Jesus, watered down Jesus, primitive Jesus, fundamental Jesus, powerless Jesus, or oppressive Jesus. Because that's not the Jesus that saved my soul. I want to hear about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the prophet from Galilee, the one who saved my soul, who founded the church, who redeemed the earth, the one who's coming back again. I want to hear about Mary's baby. And church, if we would take the power of Palm Sunday to let people know that the Lord is a big deal to me, and therefore the Lord should be a big deal to you, then I promise you people's lives might get saved. And when people's lives get saved, the love of the world is made complete. When people's lives get saved, you can heal the world and your living shall not be in vain. When people's lives get saved, all of humanity gets reconciled back to God. We get changed by his word, cleansed by his blood, forgiven by his love, purchased from our sin, redeemed by his purpose, encouraged by his life, uh, changed by his death uh, and when you save other people's lives uh, life now has meaning uh, peace is everlasting uh, hope is attainable salvation is attainable joy is unspeakable because the Lord I serve uh, the God who saved me uh, the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, Jesus is I said Jesus is a big 